Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome back to our exclusive coverage here in Puerto Rico of Blockchain Unbound Global Conference where the leaders in the industry from entrepreneurs to investors and everything in between from San Francisco, New York, Miami, South Africa, Russia, all over the world are here in Puerto Rico, the Cube's coverage. Our next guest is Naomi Brockwell who is hosting the event here on stage. She's emceeing it all. You go to her YouTube channel slash Naomi Brockwell, check out her videos, hosts events all over the industry, blockchain, celebrity, thought leader, Futurist, You're very, what else are very you? kind, it's all not true, <laughs> but I have been in the space for a while and I love blockchain tech, so it's exciting to be here. Well, I'm really impressed by your stamina and passion on stage. Um, what a lineup today, so give us the quick mm. highlights. Um, what happened today? We were here filming. What happened inside the venue? We saw some great talks come through there. Yeah, we saw some great ones. I mean, probably a highlight for me um, was seeing Elena. She was the former CEO of uh, Satoshi Labs, which created Tracer. Um, one of my favorite hardware wallets, by the way. And it was just great listening to her talk about security because that is something that is so important and people do not take seriously enough. Like, I have people telling me, oh, Naomi, I started up this wallet and I stood my public, I, I was like, so, do did you write down your, your private key and all that sort of safe place? It's like, yep, it's in my Dropbox. And I'm like, no, what are you doing? This is, this is no good. So hearing her basically say anything that has touched the internet ever, any device that has been on the internet ever is not secure. Do not trust it. Like you need to yeah. use off, uh, offline things. There's a lot things. of wallet uh, grabbing going on digitally. Um, that's Absolutely. come up, I saw some stuff on Telegram. Um, people that we know are like, hey, beware. A lot of hacking out there, you got to watch your coins. Oh, and also, I mean, there's just huge gains to be made, right? So it yeah. makes sense, especially if we expect the price of Bitcoin to go up, you have hackers just targeting specific wallets and specific vulnerabilities, and uh, they just keep going until they get through. So you've got to be vigilant, and you've got to yeah. take every precaution possible. You is just take it seriously. Is there a best practice that you've observed? Absolutely, so um, don't store anything online. And again, another thing, people are telling me, yeah, you know, I, I, I have all my, my private key written down. I'm like, great, you wrote it down twice? They're like, yeah, I just printed that out twice. I'm like, no, your printer stores an image of everything you've ever printed out, and it's connected to Wi-Fi at all times. That is going to be hacked. Do not print yeah, out yeah. your private key, your paper wallet, anything. You've got to write this down. So paper and pen is the best practice you can use. Yeah. And Go an old school wallet. analog. Big Absolutely, time. and it, isn't that funny? Like you have this amazing new tech that's yeah. fantastic, cutting <laughs> edge, and what are we doing to keep us safe? Pen and paper. <laughs> yeah, turn off all Wi-Fi, exactly. put on some vinyl records, exactly. the eight-track recorder, going old school. Okay, well, I gotta I mean, get. But holding your own uh, coins, holding your own money, having control of your own money, no one said that that's the easiest practice. They just said it yeah. was the most secure and is going to give you the most power over your, your funds. And so if you want to do that, there's a price to pay and that is being vigilant about your security. Well, one of the things about that I'm interested in talking to you about is being someone who's present at creation of a big movement like this. You've seen the evolution. What are, what's the growing pains in the industry? Because we're seeing a lot of the people who are the pioneers, now the people coming in, I won't call them tourists because it's still young and emerging, but uh -huh. you have a lot of you know, get rich quick schemes, those are obviously being filtered out pretty quickly by the community, but you're seeing you know, new entrants come in. You got financing, you got big numbers coming in, big money. How has it evolved? I mean, what's your observation? How is it maturing? Mm -hmm. What's some of the vibe? You got some factions over here, you got some factions over there. People are mm -hmm. still getting along. What's the overall sentiment? So I've been in this space for about five years. So in this industry, it's like being an absolute veteran. And what you've seen is it started out as this very libertarian space. People were interested in taking their money out of the control of government, in having more autonomy over their funds, having more control over their funds. And, um, and blockchain was invented as a tool for giving people more freedom. And what you've seen now is a bunch of people who've entered the space who don't necessarily share that ethos. But what I love about blockchain is that they're taking this technology that is inherently taking people towards a more decentralized, more free society, yeah. and they're applying it to all different industries. So from my point of view, it, it doesn't bother me at all that the new entrants don't necessarily share this passion for freedom that the people who've yeah, been here yeah. since the beginning have. Uh, but the fact that they are taking this and making the world a more free place regardless is really exciting to me. And that's the real opportunity because inherently the ethos is, the ethos is blockchain. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much a political orientation or a list or that, it's how you apply it. 
Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so blockchain, by being a decentralized ledger, is, uh, is great because when you decentralize any power structure, no yeah. matter what industry it is, um, I mean, you're really making people more free, you're giving them yeah. more responsibility, and uh, I, like, I like seeing things become decentralized. Well, certainly we're a media company, we're kind of a new guard, we don't believe in a central gatekeeper. So I got to ask you the question as a YouTuber who has a big fan base and in the community, you know, it's really disheartening for me to see uh, John Oliver take down Brock <laughs> Pierce, although it was a hilarious video up until the point where he maliciously went after Brock in a very vicious way. Yeah. How yeah. does one person have that power? I mean, it shouldn't be that way. Or the New York Times or a certain publication that they're the gatekeeper still. So we have a, I mean, that was an example I looked at and said, that's where blockchain can disrupt media. I mean, it's great comedy, but it kind of went over the top. Well, I mean, for me, he got I fired mean, by the EOS project, they wiped his name off everything. I mean, that's just, I mean, I just see that as a problem. You? Well, What's like, your thoughts? Wait, when you say how do these people get there, like John Oliver is a funny guy. I see how he got there. He's very talented. Uh, he has yeah. a great team, great writing. But that section, like I thought it was pretty spot on for most of the Bitcoin segment. It got to that section. I was like, oh, this is kind of uh, sloppy research. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was disappointing. Um, I saw that Brendan Bloomer had a nice response that he posted. He's the head of uh, EOS. What did he say? Um, he, he was just very um, uh, funny and playful with, uh, uh, with John, so that was nice to see. He set him straight in terms of saying like, what does this technology enable? Well, yeah. he was basically arguing blockchain doesn't yeah. go far enough, it doesn't fulfill the needs that I see um, in society, so I created this other thing yeah. which does X, Y, Z. And um, so he, he was authoritative in stating yeah. that no, you just don't understand yeah. the tech. Uh, yeah. And he basically clarified the Brock situation and said no, actually having him involved was really yeah. great. He's not involved for various reasons, but um, um, yeah, it was it was it was an interesting it was, segment. That it the, was so the, funny. But yeah. at one point, I'm like, oh boy. I was enjoying it up till then. I was like, okay, yeah, this I this kinda, makes sense, yeah, you know. It's funny. And then it gets up to that, and I'm like, okay, this just became an ad hominem attack. This is a cheap throw, Shot. and people do that with Bitcoin. They um, it, uh, since its inception, you've seen people and media and mainstream media in particular target Bitcoin, and they're just adopting the government narrative, saying, oh, everyone in this industry is corrupt. Oh, everyone in this industry is yeah. an ICO scammer. Oh, everyone in this industry is a you know, a drug runner and they're all selling drugs on the dark web and yeah. and it's like you know what like you can do some research yeah, and do, do a homework. bit better than that so to see John Oliver perpetuating yeah. those ad hominem attacks was disappointing yeah. but at the same time we are seeing the narrative shift yeah. and you're seeing more news outlets become more positive about Bitcoin so. well, also the data is the self governed the community has the data the truth is going to get out there that's Absolutely. the purpose of Bitcoin blockchain and crypto you got consensus, mm -hmm. you got algorithms, you got machine learning. Okay, cool. So, what are you up to? Um, you got an exciting couple things going on. You got a lot going on. Yeah. So, take a quick minute to explain your big project. You uh, right. so we got exciting, got cool things. Share it. Got some fun things going on at the moment. So while I'm not emceeing like 20 to 40 blockchain conferences a year, which is exciting, uh, but takes up a lot of my time. I'm a television producer. I have my own show. It's a uh, Bitcoin blockchain tech based. Um, and then on top of that, so I'm a film producer, television producer. We're working on a really exciting series right now. It's called the Hard Fork series. And it's this dystopian future, it's the sci-fi thriller. Uh, 18 million, or well, it's a large budget. <laughs> and we have the, uh, the, my, the guys from Ozark, Netflix originally. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. It's a great show. Uh, Christopher James Baker as our lead. And um, the community support we have garnered for this project is great because we have not only Hollywood types, we, our director is a Sundance alumni. Uh, we've also got people in the crypto space who have a huge yeah. amount of credibility. We've got Bruce Benton, Jason King on our board of advisors, people who understand the space. So the community is excited about for the first time, having a mainstream production that is being created with a large budget, uh, that where we have, where people in the industry have control of the narrative, we haven't yeah. had control of the narrative yeah, yet. That's true. The, the government's still controlling it, mainstream media is still controlling it, and so to create a series that could potentially uh, expose people to this technology for the first time, and to have control of that narrative is exciting. So, what is it going to be? Inspirational? Is it going to be uh, comedy? It's going to be gritty. It's a it's a sci-fi thriller. We call it a crypto thriller noir. Is that not the best? Genre yeah, you've ever heard. Well, yeah. It's pretty cool. So it's this idea that in the future, the government has their own blockchain and this crypto coin that they have. It's all centralized and uh, they control the populace with this augmented reality where everything is gamified. Basically the idea is the government's trying to distract people 
from important issues by gamifying everything. You have this group of renegades who comes in and they're like, no, we're going to decentralize this. And uh, so they come and, and uh, work their magic. It's Mr. It's, Robot meets Black Mirror. Oh, yeah. No, kind it's, of thing going it's pretty on. great. Yeah, so the, it basically is um, a tale about the power of decentralization and how it can disrupt authoritarian uh, rule, which I think is just a great topic for right now. And what's your background? Where are you out of LA, New York? So I'm based in New York. Okay. Um, my background, actually, how did I, you get was, here? I was an opera singer. That's how I got here. I moved to New York as an opera singer and, uh, and then pivoted into movie production and from there went on to television production and I got into the crypto space because I'm really interested in Austrian economics and love the philosophy that Bitcoin was created yeah. on. So yeah. it's been an interesting you journey. Got addicted. Yeah, you now touched, I kind of went like, to the light. Yeah, I'm bringing everything together now with my like yeah. Bitcoin economics based crypto thriller noirs. So it's pretty exciting. Well, right I'm now. super impressed and congratulations on all your continued success. Great job emceeing the blockchain Thank unbound. You. Great energy, great mind. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing. It's wonderful to be story. here. Thanks for everything. This is, the, I'm, this is the Cube. I'm John Furrier here. Breaking down, we got all the action in Puerto Rico. Thought leaders, entrepreneurs, investors, people in the industry sharing their story, sharing the data with you. That's our mission. Thanks for watching. Day two tomorrow. We'll see you then.